Hi, so today we're going to talk about the work of Gregor Mendel, who is quite frankly the most famous geneticist that ever existed. He was actually the first one who discovered how genetics actually works. So, genetics is the scientific study of heredity. Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk, and his work was important to the understanding of heredity. Mendel carried out his work with ordinary garden peas. So heredity is how things are passed from one generation to the next, so from parents to offspring. So Mendel knew a few things. He knew that the male part of each flower produces pollen, which contains the sperm. So here are the male parts, the pollen. And the female part of the flower produces egg, cell, egg cells. So here is the female. And here are the eggs inside the pod, in the pea pod. During sexual reproduction, sperm and egg cells join in a process called fertilization. Fertilization produces a new cell. So pea flowers are actually self-pollinating, or they call it self-fertilization. Sperm cells in the pollen fertilize the egg cells in the same flower. So basically, the pollen on the flower drops onto the eggs and fertilizes itself. So it, it literally reproduces with itself. The seeds that are produced by self-pollination inherit all of the characteristics from the single plant that bore them. That makes sense. If you're reproducing with yourself, you're going to produce an identical copy to yourself. So if this flower self-fertilizes or self-pollinates, it's going to create another pea plant that is exactly the same height, exactly the same color. Mendel had true breeding pea plants that, if allowed to self-pollinate, would produce offspring identical to themselves. So like I said, these plants, if they had a pink flower, they would produce pink flowers, okay? He wanted to produce seeds by joining male and female reproductive cells from two different plants to kind of see what would happen. So he knew that he could take the male part of one plant and put it on the female part of a different plant and then see what the offspring would look like. So he cut away the pollen-bearing male parts of the plant and dusted the plant's flower with the pollen from another. So cut off the male parts on the pink flower, put them, transfer them with a paintbrush onto the female parts. This process is called cross-pollination or cross-fertilization. He was able to produce seeds that had two different parents. And then he was able to look at the traits of the offspring to see what happened. So a trait is a specific characteristic that varies from one individual to another. For instance, some people have widow's peaks, this little tiny peak in their hairline, while others don't. They have a straight across hairline. Some people have attached earlobes, some people have free earlobes. These are all traits. So hair color, eye color, face shape, all of these are traits. They vary from one individual to another. So Mendel studied seven pea plant traits, each with two contrasting characters. He crossed plants with each of the seven contrasting characters and studied their offspring. So pea plants, he used pea plants because first of all, they're fast breeding, and second of all, they really only had two traits for each, or two combinations, or two, um, what we're gonna call alleles in a second. Two phenotypes. So seed shape, there was only spherical and wrinkled, so there wasn't an in-between. Seed color was either yellow or green. Flower color was purple or white. Pod shape was inflated or constricted. Pod color was green or yellow. Flower position, axial or terminal, so on the side or on the top. And then stem height, tall or small. That's basically the only traits there were, so it was easy to study. So each original pair of plants is the P, or parental generation, and the offspring are called the F1, or first filial generation. So P, F1, F2, F3, etc. The offspring of crosses between parents with different traits are called hybrids. Okay, just like a hybrid car is a cross between a gas running car and an electric car. Okay, a cross between two different parents. The offspring of crosses between two different P plants they're also called hybrids. The F1 hybrid plants all had the character of only one of the parents. 
So he noticed when he crossed two different parents, the first generation all looked like one of the parents and not the other. So his F1 crosses on pea plants. Um, his parental, when he crossed round with wrinkled, he got round. All the F1 generation were round. When he crossed yellow with green, all of them were yellow. When he crossed seed coat color, gray or white, all were gray. And then pod shaped, smooth or constricted, all were smooth. Oops. Sorry. Don't know how that happened. All right. And then when he crossed um, smooth, constricted, got smooth. Green, yellow, he got green. Axial, terminal, he got axial. Tall, short, he got tall. This is what he found for all of his F1 generations. So Mendel's first conclusion was that the biological inheritance is determined by factors that are passed from one generation to the next. These factors were eventually termed genes. So today scientists call these factors that determine traits, traits genes. So each person has a gene for eye color, hair color, skin color, um, the height, etc. So in your DNA, so here's your nucleus in your chromosome. If you uncoil that chromosome, you get DNA, and each there's part of each DNA that becomes a specific gene for a specific trait. So each of the traits Mendel studied was controlled by one gene that occurred in two contrasting forms that produced different characteristics for each trait. The different forms of a gene are called alleles. So Mendel's second conclusion is called the principle of dominance. So here's your chromosome. Here's a gene, and on the same homologous chromo chromosome, because remember you get a chromosome from mom and a chromosome from dad, you have two forms of that gene. And they can be the same or they can be different. And these are called alleles. They're different forms of a gene. So here's an allele for purple flowers and here's an allele for white flowers. So even though you can have an allele for purple and an allele for white, you're either or. This is called the principle of dominance. So whatever one is dominant, whatever allele is dominant, purple or white, that's what's going to show. Okay, that's what you're going to see in the offspring. That's why Mendel's pea plants only in their F1 generation only showed traits like one parent. So the principle of dominance states that some alleles are dominant and others are what we call recessive. So an organism with a dominant allele for a trait will always exhibit that form of a trait. And an organism with a recessive allele for the trait will only exhibit it when the dominant allele is not present. So the only way you'll show a recessive allele is if you have two alleles, one for mom, one from dad, both are recessive. So for example, blue eyes is recessive. Allele for brown eyes is dominant. If individual A has the blue and the brown, because blue is recessive, they're going to have brown eyes. Because if they, if they have the dominant allele, no matter if they have two dominant alleles or just one dominant allele, they're going to show it. The only way to have blue eyes is to have two blue-eyed alleles because blue is recessive. So anytime you have a dominant allele, that's what's going to show. The only time you actually see a recessive allele is if you have two recessive alleles, one from mom, one from dad. So Mendel then crossed the F1 generation with itself to produce an F2, or second filial generations. The traits controlled by recessive alleles reappeared in the four in one of four of the F2 plants. So when he crossed the first generation, he only got green. But when he crossed the second generation with itself, yellow reappeared. The recessive trait reappeared. So here's a parent, another example, parental generation, tall and short, all were tall. But when he crossed the tall with the tall from the F1 generation, some came up short again. So Mendel assumed that a dominant allele had masked the corresponding recessive allele in the F1 generation, which is true. We have the, all of these offspring have the recessive allele, but they're not showing it. But when he crossed it again in the second generation, it reappeared. So the trait controlled by the recessive allele showed up in some of the F2 plants. So the reappearance of the trait controlled by the recessive allele, indicated that at some point the allele for yellow 
had been separated or segregated from the allele for green. So Mendel suggested that the alleles for yellow and green in the F1 plants segregated from each other during the formation of sex cells or gametes. And we saw this in meiosis. These alleles separate because remember, your homologous chromosomes are separating into two different cells. So if you have an allele for blue and an allele for brown eyes, they go into two different sex cells. And it just, it just doesn't matter. Each sex cell could become your baby. One with blue, one with brown. So they actually segregate during meiosis. So here's a red flower and white flower. All your sex cells, when these separate during meiosis, this parent's going to give the allele for white, this parent's going to give the allele for red. So all of your offspring are going to be red and white, but because red's dominant, all the offspring are going to be red. But when this person creates their sex cells, one is going to be red, one is going to be white. So they can give their red or white to their offspring. So when each F1 plant flowers and produces gametes, the two alleles segregate from each other so that each gamete carries only a single copy of each gene. So blue and brown eyes or red and white flowers. You can create either one. Therefore, each F1 plant produces two types of gametes, those with the allele for yellow and those with the allele for green. So you can see here's a closer up picture red and white when you separate them into sex cells you can this person can only produce white this person can only produce red but when you create the offspring they have red and white so they can make sex cells that are either white or red to pass on to their offspring so you can see here they have the allele for yellow and the allele for green so in the second generation when this person and this person make their sex cells or plant they can make a sex cell with a little y and a little y. So alleles separate during gamete formation. And you can make different combinations. This is just another way to show it. So big T, little t, two different alleles. You can make a tall allele and a short allele, or a short, a tall gamete or a short gamete. And this can be passed on to any of their offspring. So this person can pass on a tall or a short gene. Similarly, this person can as well. And that is all for today. Thanks for watching.